All right, so thanks for being with us here today for our GWN series access point training webinar. I know the slide says networking solutions. Uh, today we're gonna focus mainly on um, our access points, the GWN series of access points, 7600, 7600 LR, 7610. Um, we'll actually, I'm going to begin with a quick little introduction here, tell you about each of those models, kind of what differentiates them, a little bit about what makes our GWN series, um, you know, in our opinion, such an outstanding series of networking solutions. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about our router, but we're going to, uh, in terms of the technical training, cover the router uh, in a different webinar at a different time. So today we're focusing mainly just on the access points. Um, again, I will start off with a quick little introduction and then we will get into the technical training as I mentioned earlier. So webinar usually runs just about one hour in length. Um, so the four models in our GWN series of networking solutions are up on the screen right now. Um, these are the current four models as I'm sure you've heard me talk about in other webinars that you may have attended. Uh, this GWN series of networking solutions is truly one of the, the greatest expansions um, of Grandstream in our company's history. Um, so this is going to be a, a major facet for us going forward. Um, we are all we are in the process of, of preparing a variety of other access points and routers to be released over the next six to eight months. Um, some things to look out for in the beginning of next year are actually a cloud-based controller software as well as an all-in-one um, router and access point. Um, we're also working on developing a wide range of other um, access points and routers to go along with what we have. Um, so basically what you're looking at are the four current models um, that you've probably seen or, or know a little bit about. Uh, the first model that we came out with, um, actually the first two models that we came out with were the GWN7610, um, which has been out for about, uh, a little, about a year and three or four months now, about 15 months I believe. GWN7610 is on the left there. Um, that was our first access point. It, it gives you the ability to support up to 250 clients um, with a 175 meter coverage range and an embedded controller, which you, you see the embedded controller is a bullet point mentioned on everything here. I will uh, cover that. Uh, I have a specific slide to kind of tell you about that and what makes that such a great feature in just a moment. Uh, the 7600 L or the GWN 7600 was the second access point that we came out with again just about a year ago. Um, in comparison to the 7610, the GWN 7600 gives you support for an additional 200 up to 200 clients to be able to support up to 450 plus Wi-Fi clients. Uh, gives you a little bit, uh, it supports a little bit slower speeds, just about the same coverage range as the GWN7610. Uh, the way I kind of differentiate those two models is if you're looking for, um, you know, high-end speeds, if speeds is what important is important to you, if you need to maximize the speeds you're offering your Wi-Fi users, you want the GWN7610. If you're in more interested in supporting a wide range of clients, um, you know, not exactly concerned with um, all of those clients being able to access super fast speeds. Um, places that would fall into this, I would say, are restaurants, kind of any public area or business that wants to offer Wi-Fi to their clients, but is not super concerned with offering the, you know, op most optimized fast speeds. In that case, the 7600 is great for you. Um, just about uh, a little over two months ago, you probably noticed we came out with the GWN 7600LR. This is the um, long range, our first long range access point. It is also our first outdoor weatherproof access point. The GWN 7600LR um, features IP66 certified weatherproof casing allows it to be used in, in really anywhere, but obviously also outdoors. It offers you up to 300 meter coverage range, so much more coverage range than the other GWN devices um, as well. Same um, wireless throughput, same speeds up to 1.27 gigabytes per second 
with as the GWN7600 on the GWN7600LR. Um, and then over there on the right, you see our router, which has, was actually launched just about 15 months ago as well, back when the 7610 came out. So a lot of these models, as you see here, have now been out for well over a year. Um, the GWN7000, currently the only router in our portfolio, but as I mentioned in the beginning of next year, we will be coming out with um, actually what we're calling an, an SMB router. It is a router and access point all in one, similar to um, for those of you that might get uh, a router access point combo from your uh, personally at home for your uh, from Comcast or from whoever your um, internet and cable provider is, that, that would be the same type of device that you'll see from us next year so keep an eye out for that so that's just a quick highlight of the four models in the series again today we're talking about uh, mainly the access points uh, so to kind of tell you a little bit about these access points I'll go through each one a little bit more specifically here and what really allows them to stand out are the five points that you see here um, in addition to security which actually is not mentioned here I'll cover that in a second uh, these devices offer you really comprehensive range, 175 meters, 165 meters, or up to 300 meters with the 7600 uh, LR. LR just stands for long range to, to keep that simple. All of our devices will have omnidirectional antennas, so that range is in any direction from the device. It is not, um, you know, uh, 175 meters facing forward from the face of the device which I have seen from other access points, these are omnidirectional. Um, one, one frankly very unique thing that, that we have done is we have built support for up to 16 different SSIDs or basically wireless networks into all of our access points. Most other access points from other manufacturers are only gonna go up to four and we quadruple that support. Really this just allows you to really customize um, your access points and makes them great for enterprises or for large large businesses that want to have specific networks for each department and for guests. Um, that That is really what the 16 SSIDs or 16 wireless networks allows you to do. Just really customize, build specific networks for specific people, departments, et cetera. Uh, controllerless management. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to that a little bit later on. Um, that's something that is su something very unique that we're doing. Traditionally, um, Wi-Fi access points were managed, or other manufacturers' Wi-Fi access points were managed by a device called a controller. It's either hardware or software. You usually have to down or usually have to purchase it separately, and it usually requires you to manually connect to each access point to can provision that. Whereas we've built all of that functionality into the web UI for any of our access points and our routers and allow you to set up and manage entire networks of uh, many different access points from just that one centralized web UI without having to physically touch each access point. We'll come back to that later on. Um, also the client support, which I talked about earlier, really comprehensive client support, especially when you're getting up to the 7600, 7600 LR uh, 450, um, which gives you 450 clients that you can support, whereas the 7610 gives you 250. However, as I mentioned earlier, 7610 offers you the fastest speeds in all of the GWN series access points. So if fast speeds is, is what you're interested in and you need to maximize, which is what most businesses fall into, you're going to want that GWN 7610. Um, all right, so just to go through, uh, see if there's anything I missed here about the models. The 7610, again, the first one that we came out with, uh, so we talked about the clients, we talked about the speed and the range. All of our devices have dual band MIMO technology. Um, the MIMO technology, we actually have a blog up on our website that I would, uh, if you head on over to blog uh, that Kate Clavett wrote a couple of months ago that you can check out. It gives you a really good explanation of what MIMO is, but basically it just allows our devices to maximize the amount of signals that they can both send and receive at the same time. Um, obviously, uh, support for dual band Wi-Fi on all of our devices, both um, the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band. Uh, advanced Wi-Fi security, we basically, and this is not just with the 7610, this is with all of our GWM models. Um, really, we've really built some high-end security features in it, 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 into these devices. What you see there are various Wi-Fi encryption technologies. Uh, we will, on all these devices, basically support the six most powerful um, 
Wi-Fi encryption technology, in addition to other features um, like unique security certificate per device. And, and we actually also have a blog post up on our blog. I believe that I actually yeah, that I wrote um, a couple of months ago that that really goes into detail on some of the great security features of the GWN. And we actually have um, a webinar coming up later on in December specifically about GWN security features, which you can sign up in the same email that you probably clicked a link to sign up for this one. So that's the 7610, again, 250 clients, but a 1.75 gigabits per second. So if you're looking for speeds, you want the GWN 7610. 7600, more of an entry level device, gives you a lot of client support, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, a little bit slower speeds, so this device is ideal if you need to support a lot of clients, but don't really care that much about speeds. Again, the dual, dual band, Wi-Fi, MIMO technology, same security features, the embedded controller, et cetera. Um, and then the 7600LR, which you see is in orange text, this is the newest device that we came out with uh, just about two months ago, so I, I left it in orange just uh, to kind of highlight it for some of you that it might be new to you. Whoops. Um, again, pretty much all the, pretty much talked about uh, everything in terms of the 300 meter coverage range, 1.275 gigabits per second, up to 450 uh, Wi-Fi clients. And the thing that really takes this device to that next level is the fact that it has the IP66 weatherproof certified casing, allows you to use it for, in any temperature ranging from negative 30 up to negative, uh, up to 60 degrees Celsius. Also in any weather conditions, rain, sleet, snow, etc. cetera. Um, one of the things that this device offers that you will soon see on all of our other access points, which I'm sure we will cover more in depth in future, uh, train or webinars is the Wi-Fi voice enterprise roaming feature, which is um, something to take a look at um, and potentially Ernesto can explain that a little bit more later on. Um, again, it's an outdoor, the 7600LR specifically, it's an outdoor or weatherproof certified device, comes with everything you need to mount it on a pole, whether it be a vertical pole like you see here or a side pole um, like you see actually in this picture. Um, so I talked about the controllerless management, I actually pretty much explained it already. So this is just a, a little diagram to give you a visual of what I was talking about. A lot of other manufacturers historically require you to purchase um, or download separate controller hardware or software. You have to use that controller to talk to each access point individually to set up, manage, and provision them. Um, it just it, it basically includes, requires you to pay for something extra to set up and manage your network and requires you to pretty much manually um, go to each access point or, or talk to each access point to provision or set it up. We have built all of that functionality that is the controller into the web user interface of every GWN series um, device, whether it be an access point or a router. So for example, you can use any of our access points to manage entire networks of either 30 or 50, depending on the access point, other Grandstream GWN series access point. Um, so all they have to do is be plugged into the same network, whichever uh, device you go into and access the controller from first will basically become the master um, and you have the ability right from there to set up provision, control, extend networks, manage all of the different access point, Grandstream access points on your network without having to go to any other device, without have, having to buy anything, without having to talk to and actually point to each access point individually. All right, so before I uh, turn it over here to Ernesto to go through the, uh, basically transition into the technical part of the training, where he'll actually take you through the web user interface, I uh, just wanna real quickly touch on our router, the GWN 7000. This device has also been out for just over a year now. Um, it is, uh, gives you the ability to really build and manage very large Wi-Fi networks, basically from anywhere. I talked about the controller that's built into all of our access points. That same exact controller functionality and software is built into this guy as well. However, because it's a router, it can support and manage a lot more access points, up to 500 Grandstream GWN series access points. Whereas um, all of our all all of the um, APs, the actual controller built into those will only be able to support at the moment up to 50. Whereas this gives you the ability to control and manage up to 500 access points. 
It has seven gigabit ports, two, two WAN and five LAN, gives you built-in VPN capabilities with uh, basically support for all the major VPN flavors, including OpenVPN, one uh, million packets per second routing, 10 gigabits per second switching power, gives you the ability to integrate 3G, 4G, LTE um, backup, gives you the ability to, um, what else do we have here? Built-in firewall, multi-WAN ports with load balancing and failover. We talked about the speed and the VPN. Uh, so if you're looking for a, a really comprehensive router that is uh, pr at a pretty affordable price point and makes uh, setting up and managing your Wi-Fi networks easier than pretty much any other device out there, especially if you're using Grandstream GWN series devices, the 7600LR is ideal for you. All right, so now uh, that pretty much wraps up our introduction here. Uh, so just bear with us as we transfer control over the presentation to Ernesto, who will take you through the uh, technical training. Basically, he'll show you through the web user interface of these great dev um, of our great access points, show you how to basically set up, manage, take advantage of every feature that we offer. So bear with us here for just one moment. Ready? Second screen, it looks like. I know how to do it on mine. Mine's function F5. Try that. Yeah, it looks like it's different on yours. One second. Bear with us just for one moment. It's F3 on my computer, too. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you, Phil, for that introduction. I'm going to be doing a web, um, inter um, sort of like a showing all the web interfaces of all the access points that Phil mentioned today. I'm going to focus again only on the access points. And he mentioned the highlights, the feature that all the access points support at the moment. I'm going to kind of cover. Um, the basic stuff, I mean, the, the feature that highlights Grandstream access point from all the vendors. Um, so let's get started. I have three access points, the GWN 7610, 7600, and the 7600LR. So basically, I'm going to be using the 7610 as the main um, controller. So these are three devices out of the box without any configuration. Uh, make sure that you have the latest firmware, by the way. Um, bear with me. You can check the latest firmware on Grandstream, uh, firmware.grandstream.com for the models that I'm going to be using today. Latest firmware is 4.12 and 4.22 for the 7610. Make sure that you download the GWN search software that you can get it from our website. Uh, in that way, you can once you connect the devices into your web, into your network, uh, you can basically pop up that software and do a scan, and it's going to show you only the GWN devices connected in your network. You can see the MAC address, IP address, and the IP version that the device is using. So once you identify the device, you basically click on the manage device, or basically copy and paste the IP address and paste it on your browser. By clicking the manage device, obviously your browser automatically is going to pop up with that IP address. If you have devices with an old firmware, I highly recommend you to upgrade the firmware before doing the installation. So let's get started. Default password, by the way, is admin. The first time that you access a unit, it's going to ask you to change the password. That's the very first step you have to do. Also, uh, there's a setup wizard that by following the wizard, within a few clicks, you can have a full network setup ready. If you need a basic network without any major settings changes, just by connecting one access point to your network, then it is, is ready to go. On the back of the unit, there's a sticker that has the um, a Wi-Fi uh, SSID, which the default SSID name, by the way, is GWN 
uh, the model number and the last four digits of the MAC address. So just by connecting an access point, it's ready to go. The SSID password is also in the sticker on the back of the unit. So today I'm gonna skip the wizard so I can show you how to configure uh, the devices. The first thing you have to do is connect the first device that you want to use as the control controller. So remember, that's one of the unique features that Grand Street support. We have a controller-less equipment. Uh, by connecting, in all three models, by the way, they support the controller. They come with an embedded controller. So by connecting the first device into the network, for example, 7610, then you go to access point. You're gonna find the same device already showing in the list and keep an eye that is, this is the master device. That, that means that that's where the controller is gonna be, um, um, let's say, in place. We have a nice option that you can upgrade the firmware automatically. So if, for example, this device would be in an older firmware, then it's gonna give you a red message indicating that you don't have the latest firmware. In my case, I do have it, but just for you to know, if you want to upgrade the firmware of the master device, you don't do it from this menu. Um, you do upgrade the firmware for, let's call it a slave devices from this menu. But because we're talking about the master device, then you go to system settings, upgrade, make sure that you enter your HTTP server URL or you can use Grandstream's URL, which is firmware.grandstream.com. Then right here, there's a button that says upgrade now. So that's the first thing you have to do. Make sure that you have the latest firmware, enter the firmware server path, click the upgrade button, and wait a few a couple minutes for the device to be ready. So let's go back to your access point menu. Now you see this button, discover access point. So basically you're gonna find, and the system is gonna search for all the access points available in the network. Um, I have uh, a couple that are not linked. For example, I have my LR. So I'm gonna click the action button to pair. And now you have a, an access point that is being provisioned. It's gonna take a few seconds. It comes with the latest firmware, by the way, remember the LR, uh, the latest firmware is 4.12. <clears throat> if for some reason that device wouldn't have the latest firmware, then simply click on the, uh, select that device and click on the upgrade button. That will send a signal to the device to go after the firmware server URL that you enter into your system settings upgrade menu. So now I have two access points, the master and my slave. One thing that I highly recommend, eventually you may have multiple access points. Let me see if I can add a second one. Well, I, these two are already in use. So one thing that I highly recommend, eventually you may have an, install, an installation with multiple access points, five, six, 10, remember you can have um, depending on the model, you can have up to uh, 50 access points that you can manage from this particular controller. Um, you can go to the status. You can see the status of that LR IP address. Basic information. You can click on clients and eventually here you can see all the clients that are registered to that device. And most important, the configuration. My recommendation is just enter an, a quick name. Let's call it uh, front door, for example. Uh, not front door, um, main lobby. And then you can provision all the settings. Um, You can provision the band. Remember, these are dual band devices. They support 2.4 and 5.0 gigahertz. Um, uh, you can uh, reduce or 
increase or reduce the power radio in the 5 gigahertz you have the same options you can select different type of uh, channel the channel typically are allocated automatically but in, after doing an installation you need to make sure that you need to do a Wi-Fi survey so there are some tools there's some software available online most of them are free um, we recommend acrylic for example which is a nice option you can basically it's a Windows based Linux and Apple also that you can install it on your machine and then do a survey on the Wi-Fi so if you are installing so you know where to install the access point based on multiple conditions for example you need to make sure that there are no other Wi-Fi devices um, for example the, the neighbor um, neighbor building or other surrounding areas that they may have other Wi-Fi signal you don't want to interfere with the channels so by using that tool then you know what and where to went to install the access point and if you have many channels in use by by other um, access point that are not part of your network then you can identify those channels and manually select them right in this menu typically in auto basically the, the controller is going to see which one is the most reliable channel available and the controller is going to automatically assign that channel same thing for radio power Uh, band steering, the steering, that's a good option that you can enable. We have different modes that you can force the 2G priority, the 5G, or uh, doing a, a balance. Basically, you are steering legacy uh, the Wi-Fi clients um, that support 2.4 band, for example, to use, uh, obviously, they're going to be using that band only. And then for clients that support both bands, you want them to stay on the um, band of your choice. Uh, typically, you will select the five gigs, but you can enter a balance. So it's the controller who, depending on how many clients it has, it can balance it out among all the clients. You click save. Every time that you add a uh, access point so basically I have two access points within my network and now you need to create your network so eventually you may have five six seven ten multiple access points that you need to link and make them part of the controller of this main 7610 after that you need to create your networks so you click on add enter a group name keeping that default is okay then you can enter an ssid name if you want to change it remember by default it comes with the gwn last four digits of the mac address then you can select your ssid band typically it's a dual band is okay you can hide the ssid you can limit the amount of clients We support Captive Portal. That's a good option. By default, uh, there's a basic uh, Captive Portal that and when you enable that, then the client, upon logging into the Wi-Fi network, they're going to be prompted to a, a Captive Portal that they need to click um, connect before receiving Wi-Fi signal. That Captive Portal is customizable. You can upload, you can customize your page, upload into the uh, access point, and that is going to be the page or portal page um, shown to all the clients upon logging into the Wi-Fi. And then the security mode, as Phil mentioned before, we support all the standards. We added some nice options recently, client time policy, for example. Now we can have a time. We can create a policy that is following a schedule. Um, or you can filter by specific MAC address. We have the white list and the black list. Client isolation, that's a good option, for example, for a, a guest network. 
So you want people to access the network, the Wi-Fi network, but just go directly to, to internet. I'm going to show you a, a, a small example by creating a secondary SSID as a guest. And of course, you can also manage the up and down stream rate. For device membership, then obviously you need to add the access point that you want to be part of it. So let's say that eventually you may have on the left hand side 10 access points that you linked previously then you move to the right the ones that you be, you want to be part of this particular SSID that you are configuring. And lastly, we have a schedule that Wi-Fi is going to be provided as long as this schedule is followed. So you, by checking this, then you can say, okay, I, want, I don't want it on Sunday. I just want it Monday through Friday. And then when you select Monday, you need to enter the start time and the end time. All right, so we have a group with basic settings that we added two access points. Let me click on apply. Every time that you make changes, you need to click the apply button in the top section. So in a typical um, setup, you may have your office Wi-Fi network, and at the same time, you would like to add a guest network. So let me do that for you. Basically, you go to additional SSIDs, you click on add, and you enter your SSID name. Similar to uh, before, you basically select what network. Eventually, you may have multiple networks. Right now, the network that we just configured, we call it group zero. In that group, we know already that there are two access points. Remember, you can hide the SSID name, and then you can do the same thing as before. You have a, you have a, wide, a wireless client limit, you can enable the captive portal. You can use different type of security modes, time policy. So all the same settings are available for a guest network. Similar to the schedule. Now you click Save. And of course, you need to enter a password. OK, so now with these two access points, we have two SSIDs. One is for general network. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you that in a guest network, typically you don't want customers to use just to go directly to internet. You don't want them to connect to all the computers among the group zero, uh, network zero, group zero network, sorry. So that you do it like this. All right, let's go back to that option. Select the client isolation. So then you have different options. Internet, basically, it's what typically you connect, you provide to guest users, give them access only to internet. <clears throat> then you have an option, in case you have an intranet, or in case you wanna have them, allow them to connect to different devices, you can have the gateway MAC address, for example, which could be your network MAC, uh, gateway MAC address. That means that all the traffic is gonna be sent to this particular device or a radio server by selecting that, then all the traffic is going to be sent to a radio radio server. But typically, you normally select the internet, so th these clients will be using or will be allowed to use internet only. All right, I'm gonna I'm not gonna click the, uh, the apply button for now. So that concludes 
enabling access point controllerless, adding to access point to one particular network. And now I'm going to show you all the settings, all the features that you can gain when having this uh, um, SSID. So let's, let me go back to the status page. From the overview of dashboard, you can see in one chat the status of your network. For example, you can see how many access points are discovered, how many of those are online, offline. <clears throat> you can also see how many clients are connected and on what band. So that's good uh, for troubleshooting, for example. When you have people complaining, uh, disconnecting from the network, for example, and they have uh, legacy devices using 2.4 only, and you can see that most of the dual band clients are using the 2.4, then I think it's time for you to steer the band. So that's why this number over here should be at least in balance in order to have a healthy network. Moving to the right, talking about troubleshooting as well, that's a nice option that you can tell what channels are in use. Remember the Wi-Fi uh, survey that you need to do on your office installation. By doing that, your software, uh, I mentioned about uh, acrylic. If it's gonna tell you that uh, 2.4 band channel number one is occupied by multiple access points from other um, um, Wi-Fi that are not part of your office or your network, then you know that you should not be using channel one. And as you can see, you have plenty of other channels that you can select. So then you go manually and change the channel to the one that is more available. Same thing applies for the five gig band. Then at the bottom left, we have the top access point. So basically eventually you would like to know how many clients are connected on each access point. I uh, have only one because there's no one connected to the secondary. Um, and then the usage up and down. Then you have the top SSID. You can see the same sort of statistics based on the SSID. As you know, we have one SSID with two access points. Then you can see based on this SSID, how many clients are connected and the use bandwidth usage. And then you can go by clients. So you can see the top clients. You can see the MAC address, speed, I mean the download, throughput, and upload. And based on that, you can calculate, you can see that there's a, uh, if you have some bandwidth limitation, for example, then you can see in this uh, statistic, you can see what client is the one using more bandwidth. Down to the clients, um, I wish I have a client connected. Let me see if I can connect one super quick. Bear with me. All right. So uh, there's one device connected right now. Basically, you can see uh, what type of connection, uh, IP address, what type of band, radio channel, etc. But what I like the most is you can see what access point that client is connected. That's why it's good to name, to put a name on the access point. So eventually you may have 10, 15, 20 access point, and it'll be nice if you can tell what access point the client is connected. For roaming troubleshooting, for example, sometimes if you have a roaming user that is complaining of Wi-Fi signal and you know he's roaming across the board, across the office, It'll be nice for you to know as an administrator in what particular access point uh, the computer is connected to. And the throughputs. But um, if you identify a client, and normally as an administrator, you know that you may have hundreds of clients eventually. So for troubleshooting, um, I highly recommend to enter a name so you can identify it. You can also uh, assign an IP address for that particular client. The most important, you have the, bang, the bandwidth rules that you can assign to a particular device. So remember, from the dashboard, you can see 
who is who is, who is utilizing more bandwidth across all the clients and if you have some bandwidth limitations then you identify the client and then you come to this menu and allocate some sort of uh, bandwidth so he doesn't exceed or consume all the bandwidth available all right so remember that we I mentioned that we have a client access time policy and band clients um, so eventually you can create a, a client access list you can create a time policy and a band clients once you have these uh, clients identified then you can use them I mean once you have the the client access and the time policies um, added then you can use those policies into the SSID that you created and for the band client so I, basically when you identify a client that you don't need to use the system you can basically enter the IP address and the client is going to be banned so we talk about captive portal this is another option that is embedded into the access point this is the menu where you basically upload or customize your captive portal um, again as I said before by default there's a, a nice uh, captive portal already in use you don't need to do anything just by enabling captive portal on the SSID then it's going to be using this captive portal here it's, it's, it's a, it's a uh, page that it has a grand stream logo and it has a, um, uh, a small disclosure and then you click um, a checkbox and then click connect so you can gain Wi-Fi access if you want to customize it we have nice guides on our website that is going to show you how to customize it but basically you need to download these files edit it change it to your um, whatever logo you want to be and then you can upload them from this menu bandwidth rules so you can also create some rules to allocate bandwidth to different SSIDs you can do the same thing of um, you can also um, configure the rules on the SSID itself when you are creating that and then we have the system settings where we have most of the settings for troubleshooting maintenance etc so in the basic menu you have all the setting to uh, edit or change the time zone or the display format upgrade menu as I mentioned before this is where you upload you enter the firmware server path protocol etc you can even download the configuration so that you can restore it in another device access to the web interface this is where you can change the password there is a uh, you can point the all the syslog to be sent or pushed to this particular IP address that you enter here you see for troubleshooting however the access point with, comes with a small memory that you can um, actually that's another menu let me finish with this one um, now this is the log server so this is the settings that you need to enter in case you are troubleshooting and you have enabled a syslog server so basically the access point comes already with that embedded syslog server that you can use that for itself or for other access point that you wanted to push the syslog to this particular syslog server that you are enabling which again is embedded into the same unit for debugging captures um, this is where you can turn on the capture everything that is going out of the wire can be capturing a pcap file this is good for troubleshooting uh, in case there's a crash or an event the system is going to automatically generate a core dump and this is where you can retrieve the file most of the time this is information that you can share with grand stream support then typically ping and trace route 
and the syslog. As I said before, there's a syslog embedded. Um, you can get the logs from this menu. In addition to that, we added some email notifications from this little device. It has, comes already with an email uh, server. Out of the box, by using M MTA, um, it will send emails to uh, based on the action that you select here. For example, when the memory is in, is in high usage, CPU, when there's a firmware upgrade, and other events. So when you select that, previously, by the way, you need to enable this, enter your host port, you know, all the email clients, and a, an email address. When you save it, then you go to the notifications, and here, enable the actions that you will be notified upon happening these actions. LEDs, so as you know, the access point, they come with three LEDs uh, in three different colors, I believe. Uh, you can customize it, you can change it, you can turn it on, you can turn it off, you can even create a schedule. Sometimes you don't want the LEDs to go on at night, for example. So you can create those type of rules in this menu. There's a nice option, let me show you quickly. Let me go back to the access point. Um, when you pair an access point, for example, this is my LR. Again, you have the edit button here. This is the uh, pair button. You can unpair it if you click it. We added recently uh, this option where you can bridge, you can convert that access point as a bridge, meaning that, uh, remember that we support mesh topology network uh, with multiple access point. Uh, they can be working as a bridge mode. So simply by connecting a power supply to the unit, and then you have multiple access points all pointing to each other, they can be work. They are working as as, as a uh, repeater. So you don't need to connect a wire, a network cable, but only on to the first access point. That access point is basically pushing the signal, and then the other access point working as a bridge. That you need to enable this option here they will be bridging and then repeating to other access points to continue the chain. But talking about LEDs, I wanted to show you this button uh, for installation purpose, for example. Sometimes you may have a lot of access points in one location and you would like to know which one is which. Once you install them, you don't have access to the MAC address. So you would like to, for example, enter a, a name to that particular access point. Then you, by clicking this button, I have my LR right here, but it went in front of me. So when I click it, I can see that LED start blinking with a white um, color LED. In that way, you identify the device and then eventually you can name it um, like I did uh, here as main lobby for as an example. All right, so I believe um, I wanted to cover the basic uh, set of features I kind of highlighted the controller because that's one of the nice features that Grand Screen support, um, embedded controller, and obviously I gave you a tour of all the uh, options that the, this little devices support. Keep an eye on our website. Within a couple of weeks, we're going to release a new S, uh, service pack uh, firmware that is going to introduce new features. And of course, keep an eye on the website about future webinars that we will be talking about those new features. Um, so I'm going to open up uh, to Phil uh, for the Q&A. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to send <clears throat> the question in the Q&A section. Awesome. Thanks, Ernesto. Yeah, we've got some questions, and if you do have any, uh, feel free to uh, type them over to us. Um, I would appreciate it if you use the question and answer panel, um, which you can find on the bottom uh, of your screen towards the right hand side. It's a little Q in a question bubble or excuse me in a chat bubble um, If for whatever reason you have difficulties with that can't find it do feel free to use the chat um, So the first question I know you covered this um, But got a couple of questions about it, and I believe it's something newer that we have added support for recently but that captive portal I mm -hmm. was wondering if you could maybe quickly go through that uh, sure. again and maybe give us uh, some information about uh, how that works. Sure, definitely. Let me, one second, let me open that. Oh. 
Oh, let me... One second. Sorry here. for the reload. So I muted it oh. from here. Already? Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a new cloud that is coming up by next quarter. Yeah, no, I know. Do you want to mention anything? I, I have. People have been asking about it, okay. actually. Okay, do you want me to give a little tour? Maybe it's too early. This is yeah, I go ahead. Okay. okay. We okay. Talk. I talked about it in the beginning. Oh, okay, enough. okay. Perfect. Ready. Uh, good. All right. So, yeah, that's a nice option, by the way. Uh, it's, it's embedded. You don't need a third party and software or computer to have a captive portal. Typically, by default, by the way, when we're talking about just a captive portal, basically, it's by enabling this option, every client that logs into the Wi Fi is going to be prompt. I mean, the browser is going to be pop up, and then they need to check an option, then click enter or submit or connect. It's a big connect button. And then uh, the access point is going to provide access to the internet. Uh, it's customizable, and that's what the question I believe is coming from. So basically, this is where you customize it. These are the pages that are embedded with the with the access point. Um, this where the images are. Uh, obviously, the there's a docu document in our website, by the way, to show you how to edit how to um, customize your captive portal. But by you looking at these pages, typically this is the portal page. I'm sorry, the, the default is this one, portal default. This is the one that you need to edit. Obviously, typically you download it. You go to edit. Okay, uh, I think there's an option that you can download it or you can get the files. Uh, well, you can basically from the same, once you log into the portal, you can from the browser download it so you can have the, let's call it the template in case you want to edit it on top of that. Other than that, then you, it's on your, you, you are on your own. You can edit and create your portal as you wish with the logos, with the disclaimers, and the click button and everything is, is, is up to you to edit it. Once you have that file, then you go to this button here and then you can upload it. You can also create other folders in case you have multiple pictures that are you know pointing or linking to all the files, all the HTML files, or looking for pictures that are in another folder, for example. So we have you have full control of editing your, your page, adding folders, and obviously uploading the HTML page. Now, how to enable it? Then, and here, by the way, you can see your clients. If I have any clients connected right now, I can see for how much time they've been logged on. You can, for example, ban it. You can uh, uh, cut the, the connection and basically just find out the IP address. So eventually you may want to move that IP address into the band list, for example. So if I have it set up to like ask people to submit their name and email address when they log in, is that also where that information would show up? No, the captive portal is only a basic. It's typically to show a okay. disclaimer. Okay, this is the company ABC, uh, Wi-Fi network. Uh, we're not responsible for any browsing, whatever, and then people can accept the terms and, and connect. Now, if you want to authenticate, then we do support the radios server so let's go quickly to my network where you enable the captive portal and you have multiple options right here so you enable captive portal here you select your policy that you created already as i showed you before um, is in the okay right here then once you have your captive portal you can also authenticate against a third-party server a radio server by the way that's what the servers are used for so then in that server you can have authentication credentials there are a lot of radio servers available out there most of them are free also uh, open radios is one of them that you can just install it yourself, create um, a batch of um, you know uh, credentials. User, uh, the user could be an email address, 
and the password. You can randomly generate the password by yourself. So once you have a list of credentials, you can upload it into your radio server. Then you can customize your captive portal that you can enter two fields for authentication. So user and password. Then the user, the client is going to enter that information. Access point is going to receive it, and the access point is going to send it authenticated against the radio server. That's another way, very typical for hotels, um, coffee shops. Um, and talking about coffee shops, by the way, most of the uh, most the most typical feature in a coffee shop is about vouchers. So vouchers are another option that the cash register can generate a little code upon the client making a purchase. Then that code is going to be entered in your captive portal. In the next coming firmware release, by the way, that I was mentioning before, um, our access point are going to support the voucher feature. Awesome. Thank you for going through that again. Um, all right, some, some more questions to go through. Uh, this one, I believe, this is talking about the router, not the access points, but I mentioned VPN functionality. Does it support both VPN client and servers? Yes. Yeah, open VPN in both options, um, client and server. I wish I had one with me, but I don't, but um, it's, it's available. Awesome. Um, let me read through this question. All right, so back in the, a backup of the configuration from the master access point. If the master access point fails, Good. Um, how do I basically load this configure, restore it uh, to another point, and will that take on all the access points like the master did? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And we recently, not too long ago, we added the failover master. So again, go back to your access point menu. Then you click the fillover option right here. Then, so basically, you know that you have, unfortunately, have only one, um, two access points only, but eventually you may have multiple access points. It'll be nice if you, the recommendation is to use the same model, okay? Uh, because of the space, the config file uh, is gonna, template is gonna be exactly the same for that particular model. So, in other words, by selecting the failover that I access point, when you click save, then these two access points are gonna be in a failover mode, meaning that they're gonna be kind of pinging to each other. Once the master is not responding, then the failover access point is gonna take over. Okay. Awesome. And by the way, there's an event that you can be notified if the master access point fails. Uh, are our access points PoE? The answer is yes, I believe, right? Yes, yes. all of them all of them. PoE. Yep. Um, when somebody is banned from a network, does the system immediately ban them on all connected access points? Yes. Yeah, everything that you do, and remember, this is that what I show you is the controller access point. So all the settings that you're doing for uh, black, white, black or white listing, for example, are pushed across all the access points within the network. Uh, do we support SSID scheduling? Um, okay, do we have more information? So we do have schedules. So for example, you want to have an SSID available right. during office hours, but not showing That's my hours, right? Yeah. Um, I believe no, although we do have a schedule, remember, that you can have, you can provide, let me show you quickly, you can provide Wi-Fi signal by following a schedule. So the SSID is still going to show up, but it's not going to be signal out of this, this schedule. So maybe that's what the question is coming from. Um, uh, that's a question, actually, I can answer. The question is basically that the 7600LR, the long-range um, weatherproof access point that I mentioned earlier, the question is if there's any downside to using that model indoors, being that it's made for outdoor use. Um, from my side, it's, it's no. You'll, you'll get the exact same power range, 
client support, everything, speeds that you're going to get for using that thing outside, inside. Um, the, really, it's just that weatherproof casing that allows it to be made to use, be used outside is also is a great access point that you can kind of move around. Um, we had, a, you know, we have a couple of switching products here, but we have a couple of um, security cameras that have weatherproof casing and, and they're as popular. I, I know that they're different products, but they're as popular being used indoors as outdoors. Same thing with this. You'll get the same performance inside or outside. Just if you're using it outside, it's got weatherproof casing. Yeah, just in addition to that, um, the long, long range has a um, signal angle of 190 degrees because of the, the, the design of the device. So typically you put it outside, so it's weatherproof, obviously, but at the same time to cover an area in a 190 degrees. So if you have the same requirement in an indoor environment, then that's a good option for you to a big warehouse, for example. Yeah, no, that's thanks for pointing that out because that that does differ from our the other GWN series access points, which are omnidirectional. But this one is you're right off mm -hmm. the the front of the device. Good thing to point out. Um, wondering if and maybe you have some some visibility or know about this. If we're planning to implement a radius server into the GWNs at any time. Uh, heard any yeah, we that. heard about it. We had received the same uh, requirement request, but um, uh, we don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to take notes and um, we can do it. But the, the question is about security. So that's easy to do. As, as, as I showed you before, we embedded a syslog server, you know, that, so we can do a radio server as well. We have a captive portal also in these little devices. So the radio server occupy almost nothing, no, no space. Uh, however, however, the problem that, that I see is security. Normally, you want to have the credentials in a different location. You don't want to have them all in the same uh, unit. So, but yeah, you're right. Probably we can use the radio server off another access point um, and point it, point the main or the master access point to that one. So we'll see. Uh, but I'll keep, I'll keep that in my notes. Um. Going back to the question about the 7600 LR being used inside and outside, and I think this is more general, but from your experience, is there a, like an optimal height that these devices should be um, mounted at in order to have to maximize range or, or whatnot? Yeah, I don't know that. Um... It's up to you at the end, yeah. depending on the, the setup of the, the area. Uh, in a high uh, warehouse, for example, yes, probably you, depending on the area that you want to cover. Remember, this device is, 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 is omnidirectional still, but because of the design, it's kind of sending the signal towards that angle that I mentioned. So, you know, by have, keeping that in mind, maybe you can install it in a location that is going to cover better the area that you want to serve. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Just generally, you know, it has more to do with where you're installing it. And yeah, probably if, you know, it probably best to install it at a, at a higher point, uh, especially in a large area like a warehouse or an outdoor area. Um, good point. Um, question about um, pairing uh, the APs with wireless phones, wireless, wireless SIP phones specifically. For which this is a good opportunity for me to point out that we are actually coming out with a line of um, wireless handheld uh, SIP phones next year. So keep an eye out for that. We also currently have a couple of models. I know our GXV series all have built-in Wi-Fi. Um, so the question is, can are these access points can they be used with wireless SIP phones? And is there any potential quality de degrada degradation there? Um, as opposed to a wired connection. Yeah, um, so typically the the roaming, it, that's kind of the, where the main question is coming from. It, think about a computer also. So a wireless, I mean, a Wi-Fi IP phone is similar to a computer. So the roaming strategy is built into the client, not into the device. However, because Grandstream is coming, with uh, Wi-Fi phones in the future, our product helps to facilitate the client 
to know when to switch it, when to roam to the next access point. Um, but in my, my opinion, the problem with the Wi-Fi phone is uh, quality of service. So the device, you need to have a survey to make sure that you have enough coverage in the area that the individual is going to be roaming around. Um, but yeah, most of the protocols are on the client side to determine when to roam to the next access point. And that's specifically that Wi-Fi enterprise roaming feature that, that we were talking about earlier on the 7600LR? Is right. that what that is? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, this question about some network switches that we are developing for next year and some more information on that. Believe me, as soon as we have more information on that, you'll probably see it released through our beta club. So keep an eye out for that next year. Um, yeah, I think that, um, you know, we answered, at least from what I see here, we answered pretty much all the questions um, out that came in through the Q&A, um, through out loud at least. Um, so if there are any final questions, feel free to send them over now. Um, I will hang on here for about 30 seconds or so um, before we wrap up, to see if there are any final questions that come in. Um, in the meantime, one thing that I will mention that some of you have probably seen emails from us on um, is a new initiative that we have started for training certifications called the Grandstream Academy. Um, you can access this by, was it academy.grandstream.com? Um, basically what this is, is it's creating a structured, centralized program for all of the in-person trainings that we were previously doing. Now we have an online portal that allows you to basically see all of the upcoming trainings that would allow you to become certified. Uh, there are two, three different levels of certifications that we offer, a basic, um, a more advanced, and a, and a actually currently a level that's really for those that are interested in giving their own Grandstream trainings. Uh, so head on over to academy.grandstream.com to learn more about that, to sign up for trainings. It also gives you a place where right online from a central location, you can track your certification, renew it in the future, take exams, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in terms of a question, uh, I've got a question about, are there trainings to be certified that are online only or, and not at a real location? Um, so this is the, the current plan and the way that we're proceeding here is there are three different levels. There's a, a Grandstream Certified Specialist level, which is a more basic level that you will be able to attend uh, webinars or view video recordings of to achieve that level of certification. All levels above that, um, we are doing only through in-person trainings. And the reason for that is because, you know, we can we can sit here in a, a training webinar and, and kind of click around and show you some things on a screen for a couple of hours. But by far and away, the, the best way that you're going to basically learn the most, be able to ask the most questions, and, and the way that we're really going to be able to go through every single de possible deployment scenario is at an in-person training, which are usually at least one full day, sometimes two full days. They're very hands-on. You're in the room with a Grandstream trainer and, and maybe at the most 19 or 20 other people. Um, so that's why those, you know, the more advanced trainings are always going to be in-person trainings. And again, I would, uh, I would encourage you to head on over to academy.grandstream.com. Uh, right from that homepage, you can see a list of upcoming trainings. I believe we have about 15 or 20 planned for the rest of the year. Um, these trainings are usually done uh, with or by our Grandstream certified partners, your, distrib your distributor. Um, so if there aren't any in your area, check in with your distributor, um, and that's usually the best way to, to get a training in your area. All right, so looks like that is pretty much um, it for today. We went through pretty much all the questions. I want to thank Ernesto for uh, giving us a great demo of the GWN access points. Again, we, we pretty much focused on the GWN series access points here today. This webinar was recorded uh, in its entirety, both the video and the audio. I will upload it to our YouTube page uh, actually right after the webinar. So if you check 
in about an hour or two, it should be there. Uh, I believe that URL is youtube.com slash Grandstream Networks. Um, if you do go there, you can also see a variety of other training webinar recordings um, for our GWN series devices, for our UCM series PBXs, for our IP phones, for our GDS uh, 3710 uh facility access solution and other products. So again, thanks for joining us today. We know that it's a very busy time of year being the holidays. Uh, there's a lot that everybody's got going on. So we appreciate you spending some time with us to learn a little bit more about Grandstream products. Um, keep an eye out. We have a variety of other webinars coming out, uh, coming up throughout the course of the rest of the year. You probably got an email about it yesterday or this morning. Uh, so keep an eye out. Check uh, the webinars page on our website. Check the training center for these training webinars. Um, and then, as I mentioned, academy.grandstream.com for in-person trainings. So again, thanks for being with us. We hope to see you again soon. And have a great day. Happy holidays to everybody.